Hi, it's Will from StormyCastle.com, and here in YouTube, you know me as what? Epic Fantasy, that's right. And this is my latest tutorial. This is part two of my How to Make Homemade Paper series of videos. Um, in this part, we go a little bit more into intermediate techniques, which are actually quite wonderful, but still pretty easy to do on how to make a better paper and how to do a few different, more, a few different things um, with paper making. Um, first, let me give you, uh, first let me say, if you're absolute beginner, you never made paper, you might want to watch part one, which I'll put right here somewhere. Um, that takes you from the very beginning, not knowing anything about paper making, and making some paper, making your little wooden mold, and uh, you know, using a blender, if you can see that blender, uh, to make some paper. That's a great place to start, and then you can watch this um, video too, a little bit more advanced techniques. Let me cover what we're going to do. We're going to make some wonderful paper here, like this. And these are just quite spectacular. Can be used for a lot of different things. And um, we're going to use a technique called dipping rather than pouring. In part one, we pour the paper into the mold. In part two, we actually, in this video, we actually dip the mold into the solution of paper. It gives us more control, makes a finer and thinner paper. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the tutorial. And also, we will be using something called a cotton linter. If you can see that, this is part of the cotton plant to make cotton fiber paper, which is just terrific. And this is really inexpensive and it goes a long way. Cotton linters. So we we'll make cotton paper, which is probably get pretty excited about. And uh, one more thing I will cover is using paper to make shapes by uh, making a mold, like something like this. So we make the paper and then we put it on the mold and we end up with something. Like that little tent. See that little tent is... This is part of the Storm the Castle diorama. This is the attacking army is using these tents as their encampment. So I will show you the, a little bit about that too. See another tent. So that's it. Part two of how to make paper. A little bit more intermediate techniques. Some wonderful techniques on how to do it. Um, we'll launch into it in a second. Let me just say thank you for watching this video. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. I very much appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button wherever it may be. I always have a lot of creative and interesting and fun uh, stuff to do, you know, from, well, all kinds of different subjects I cover. Uh, so uh, leave a comment. If you have a question, leave a question in the comments. I do answer questions. I do read all comments. Uh, thank you very much. So let's uh, launch into the introduction, and then let's do how to make paper, part two, a little bit more intermediate techniques. Thank you. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, and bondages, and paper games, soldiers, like lexus, think about a rocket's ambition. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Let's take a quick look at part one of the, of the earlier uh, video on how to make paper. You, you blend up some uh, paper some, to recycle it with water until it makes a nice pulp, and then you pour it on the mold like this. That's the pour method. Easy enough, and it makes nice paper. That's the way to start. And we're only going to do this for another five seconds here, just a review of how we did it. And see, you get a nice paper there. You can dry it, press it, iron it even. But now let's move on to this part, how to make a more advanced paper. In this part, we make a larger, much larger batch of water here, using a lot of water in that blender. And you can do the same thing and recycle. You can do this method by recycling old paper too. But we're using a generous amount of cotton linters. And then adding just a little bit of white, nice white paper. And experiment with the different types of papers. I will also show you um, later, we do in this video, we use brown paper bag to tint the paper. That's to make the little tents. So a little bit of, of uh, regular paper. But that's optional. Blend that up into a nice pulp. And then you pour it in your bin like this with already, there's already a gallon of water in there. And then you stir it up with your hand or a paddle or something to kind of make it an even consistency. So it has to be enough to, um, to cover the whole mold and deckle. And if you want to know how to make one of those, that's in part one. So you put it in like this. This is dipping it. This is the new method. And then you pull it out like that. And see that? Look at that. Sheet of paper. Just like that. You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? I'm telling you, 
You start making paper, you're not going to be able to stop yourself. It's wonderful. And you can adjust the thickness of that by the thickness of the decal or um, by the amount of paper or cotton linters you put in that water. And by the, even by the way you swipe that through the water, you swirl it through or you tip it. You know, and that, uh, that changes the consistency of the paper. So you put a screen on it and sponge it off. Now we're using a new thing here that's a little bit more um, professional. These are called coaching sheets or couching sheets. It's pronounced, um, spelled couching, but it's uh, pronounced couching. There's, a, there's special sheets for paper making. You can buy them. They're very easy to buy. Um, and it absorbs a lot of water and helps you dry your paper you're making, rather than the felt we used in part one. And you flip it over, get it on the sheet, and then you put another sheet on it, like this, and then you press it. Use some kind of a flat object like this to press it. You can't, um, you can't like swipe it or push it because it, um, it'll distort and cause wrinkles and bumps in that coaching paper. You just press it straight down to, to absorb most of the water. There you go. Now you can press this between books to further press it. You can um, lay it between, the, put it between coaching sheets and then um, press it, let it stay, or you can even iron it. Put it between the sheets and iron it to dry it. See now, I wanted to show you something. The more you use that water that you made in the bin, the thinner the paper is going to get. Now this is seven sheets later and the paper is getting very thin. That means you should add more cotton linters or more of your recycling paper into the blender and pour it in there because you're starting to run out of um, fibers in the water. See how thin that sheet of paper is? This is the seventh sheet. We're actually going to take a look at those sheets. But it's still paper and you can be real easy with it and swirl it around and tip it right and get a full sheet out of it. But eventually there's not enough um, fibers in there to make it. So let's take a look at seven sheets. That's the first sheet we made. Pretty thick. See how the light doesn't shine through it a lot? That's sheet two. We're starting to see more light through it. Sheet three is getting thinner. Sheet four, thinner still and a little uneven. Sheet five, getting more uneven. So, you know, depending on how thin you want it, you can add more solution, blender solution into it. So sheet six is pretty thin. And then finally, that last sheet we just did, sheet seven, look how thin that is. So it would be, be, be time to add more to that border. So that's important and you'll get a feel for that. So we learned about couching papers, we learned about um, dipping, and now we're going to learn a little bit about molding. And you can make positive molds like this or negative molds. Here's a mold of a tent, just made out of um, foam and some wire. And we're using it, like I just showed you for the Storm the Castle diorama, so we want to keep the scale right. You see there's a person who would go inside that tent. And we want to alter the color of the fabric, so we're adding some brown paper. But we're still using cotton linters. So it's almost like a canvas we're making. Although no, no way near that thick, but a miniature canvas. So it would be less, it would be uh, much thinner too. We put that, we pop that in the blender with some water. Make a sheet of paper out of it. Now you could use this, and I'll show you a little bit more, but you could use this whole sheet of paper on a mold, or you can even cut it, but it looks, looks good. Follow the same process, you dry it, you sponge it, you put a screen on it, you sponge it, put it between your papers, and you, you press it to dry it somewhat, and then you can iron it, or you can let it sit overnight, you can hang it. But we're going to, while it's still wet, if you want to mold it, you gotta get it while it's still wet using either the whole sheet or pieces of sheet like this because this is kind of a complicated mold we have here. You know, first one you do, the first few you do, just do a single mold of a single sheet with no cuts 
on a simple object like a cup to get a feel for how it, the paper works and how it acts. You know, I'm really, really enjoying this paper making. I've opened up a whole new section of the website for paper making alone, and I'll be doing more. And there's so much you can do with it. It's amazing. You know, and scrolls and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and you can even do detail work. See, the tent is open a little bit. The flap is open a little bit. Nice. When this gets painted, it's going to look terrific. There's a larger tent. You know, if you like miniature stuff, um, or if you like castles and stuff like that, check out that other video, series of videos on making the Storm the Castle diorama. That's an ongoing project. That's, that's advancing until it'll be finished, and we'll finish that off. See, and there's some detail work. Okay, so all that remains after this is to let it dry, and then remove it from the mold. And sometimes if you do a little bit of complicated things like this, you may have to add a little bit of glue to this so it stays in place. So that's it. We've got our tents. We've made some paper molding. We've done some paper molding. We've had a little bit of fun. I'm telling you, you're going to love paper making. It's so easy to do, so easy to get started. Let's take a look at some other projects. Paper making part one, how to make a medieval scroll, how to make a wire bonsai tree, and how to make a large but fake boulder. Thank you.